Greetings, my awesome animation students. So today we're going to wrap up this uh, second review or the second part of review for kind of just looking at the um, Adobe Illustrator tools and the panels and getting around. We've went through this. You've already worked through a project. But I'm, again, I'm just reviewing for the quiz slash test tomorrow. All right, so let's go ahead and begin by opening up our Adobe Illustrator. And uh, this will be a shorter video than yesterday. And again, if you guys follow along and you uh, use these two videos, you can study and, and everything that I'm talking about is going to be on the test. So make sure that you are paying attention and following along when I'm asking you to. So let's go ahead and start. Um, look for this, um, you know, your L1 start, which was basically this file that we worked on yesterday. And let's continue. Let's continue to explore and let's continue to uh, just basically experiment with all of the different little features and panels and tools that uh, that we're going to be covering and we're going to be using and mastering throughout this uh, through this unit, right? So we're going to let's talk about contextual menus for a moment. So uh, usually when we're we're working with our Illustrator files, we're we're selecting right. And I said this in the last video. I'm going to say it again. You select it to affect it. You memorize it, put it in a song, put it in a poem, right? Um, you select everything you select it when you, you have to select something before the properties panel will change. All right. Don't, and, and if it's not giving you what you want, for example, you want to change the color of this um, moon, right? And say it's, you can't find color here for some reason in the properties panel, then you know, double check that you have selected it. Because once you select it, the color. Um, fill and stroke and opacity, basically the appearance box in the panel will appear, but you have to select it to affect it, right? And that's where the, everybody runs into little problems. They don't select it, they forget to select it, or they lock their layer, right? Because if you lock your layer, you can't select anything, okay? So make sure that you, when you're locking your layer so you don't mess up, that you remember to unlock them. So those are the two areas that you can find yourself in trouble. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is context, uh, contextual, I'm sorry, context menus or contextual menus, all right? Um, so we're going to go to the, pa uh, the, the panel icon, all right? So let's go to, um, let's go up and I'll pull out this artboards menu for a second. All right, so our board menu has lots of different things. It has where you can add an art board and all the panels are usually gonna have this little plus sign down here, right? And I'll hover over it for a second, all right? Most of them, if you go to your layers panel, right? It has a little plus sign here. That adds whatever your panel you're in. So if it's layers and has a little plus sign down here, it means you're, you're gonna add layers. If you're in the art boards panel and it has a little plus sign here, that means it's going to add an art board, right? But I'm not gonna want that. So, but what we're going to study right now is we're going to study that we have uh, these menu, right? These three little lines. They all have these three little lines in these panels. And what that does is it gives you different options. Again, remember that plus sign we just talked about? You can hit this little um, contextual menu or this context menu, and you can have all of these other options, right? Delete empty artboards, convert art to artboards, artboard options, so on and so forth, right? And then if you right click, right some like this one won't give you anything right and again this one won't give you anything either so right click doesn't work sometimes in it does work sometimes it doesn't work other times um i thought it might work here you know to give us any other options but it doesn't so really to add our boards we would go to the new our board little icon button or we would come up here to the three little lines which is going to basically be our context menu all right um so let's go ahead and uh, and another thing I'm going to bring it bring it out over here and I'm going to go ahead and close this our boards menu. I'm going to bring up the well, actually you know what let me put this back in view, view fit our board in window so I can get this back up over here, and I'm going to select the moon right and go back to properties and we've done this many times select the moon go back to properties so we see this other menus right so we see the fill the the the, the color box swatch box okay then it's the fill. Notice that it's not underlined, so if I click fill, there's nothing there. So we do have the color that we can select right here, but we also have the stroke, but the stroke has multiple things. We have the stroke color, right? But if you click on the stroke, which is most of you already figured this out, especially if you were using the, the brush to trace, you hit the stroke and the stroke has its own menu. 
with the different items that you can actually put in there, right? By clicking on the word stroke. And again, I can't highlight this enough. If it's underlined, there's a hidden menu. Just like over here in our tools panel, we have the little uh, triangles on the lower right-hand corner. It tells you that there's a nested, um, there's nested uh, tools. Well, over here in the properties panel, if it's underlined, it has nested menu, all right? So just, I know it's kind of weird that it's gonna be, it's like a secret door or, you know, that you have to figure out almost like a video game, like, oh, there's there's something here, right? So that's kind of what is, well, Illustrator's filled with these uh, types of little Easter eggs, so to speak. I wish it wasn't so difficult. I wish they had like another little box that said options on each part, but you know, I'm not working for them. Maybe they'll hire me and maybe they'll say, all right, Mr. Wattis, help us improve Illustrator to make it easier for everybody, right? But no, they won't. This is uh, this is something we have to get used to. So again, over here is the, the, the stroke width or the stroke thickness, right? And again, I can kind of go to one point and you'll see it reflected on the moon because I have it selected and that's what I'm affecting. So I'm gonna go back to zero, all right? And so let me go ahead and go up to here, select and deselect. And it'll deselect everything. So no, my moon is longer, no longer selected, right? And we are moving on, right? So um, let's talk about the Zoom, all right? Because Zoom is a very important tool. Some of you, especially when working on the ice, ice cream cone and you were working on the sprinkles, you didn't see the four little um, bars that you can pull, right? The four little dots that you could pull to make to round the edges. And that's because you weren't zoomed in enough. And that's I cover that in class. Now, we have lots of options for Zoom and there's lots of reasons why we're gonna use the Zoom tool. And a lot of you are familiar with, I've already told you, there's the Command Plus, right? That will, will, will adjust everything. Oops, I'm on the wrong screen. Command Plus, that'll zoom in, right? And the Command Minus to zoom us out. Then at any time we can come over here and go to View fit artboard into window and it comes back to the center and gets it, get us back where we can see everything in the right spots. That's really cool, right? But we can also select the, the uh, moon. If we were, we just want to zoom in on the moon. We don't, and we don't, we don't want to kind of be moving things around. If we go to view, right? And we zoom in, it centers the moon. And then we hit uh, view and then zoom in again and then view and then zoom in again. You should try this, right? Because this is going to be helpful. It focus, it centers the moon and it starts zooming in and zooming in, right? Go to view, fit artboard and menu. We're just playing with the zoom button right now, right? Or the zoom options. So you again, if you don't want to keep going into the menu, we do the shortcuts. Shortcuts, the more you master them, the better and faster you'll be with Illustrator. I know the shortcut command uh, plus is going to zoom in. So I selected the moon and now I'm going to, I can zoom in really quick, all right? And then I'll bring that out. But hey, it doesn't. it's not adjusted right. Hey, well, guess what? We have the fit artboard and window. So let's go ahead and I want to select the this palm tree and I want to zoom in really quickly. See, it centers it and it brings it in. So if you want to select something, you can actually do that, all right? View, fit artboard and uh, window. And if you want to use a shortcut, and I'll use that shortcut right now, I'll do Command Zero, and it automatically brings me here. So if even if I'm if I lose this, all right, if I lose it anywhere, and I just hit Command Zero, it brings me back home. Okay, guess what? You learn a new shortcut, right? And that that'll always help you get back to where you want to get to. Again, the way I got to there was Command Zero. All right. So. The, uh, besides using the shortcuts, which I would prefer over using the going up here and going to the menu, right? But you still have to know that for the, you know, they're going to ask you that on the, on the certification test. Um, you can use, we have here the zoom in tool. Now the zoom in tool is an even, believe it or not, is even faster way to zoom in and zoom out. So you click on the zoom tool, right? And you can just hover over the item you want to zoom into. And then guess what? Boom. It automatically zooms into that. But say you're up here close and then you want to, you basically want the palm tree now, right? And the palm tree will zoom in. All right. Command zero. Boom. Command zero puts me back where I need it to be. So that little zoom button, if, you, if you're if you specific and you just want to zoom in on one certain thing, you can do that, right? 
Command zero to go back to where we want. But here's another cool thing. Let's just say I want to look at this 20 in tour. And I have my plus um, win, my plus open, right? My, my, my window. Or actually, you know what? I forgot to tell you something. So let me go ahead and zoom in on this palm tree. So to zoom out, all you have to do is hold down option and then click and see how see how it from the plus sign on the magnifying glass it actually turns into a minus sign when you hold down option now you can click as much as you want and you zoom out so wave wait maybe maybe you went hardcore and you went too close but you want to zoom out so now i'm going to hit the, the option key turns into minus and you can zoom out i'm going to go ahead and command zero to put me back in center i love command zero right it gets us in the same spot but here's another here's the last trick for your zooms all right you can also click and drag so if I uh, click on the moon and then I click and and you can just hold down click and all of a sudden look how, how it just completely, uh, I just held down click. But if I held down click and then scroll to the right or scroll to the left, click and drag, you can get to it really quickly. See, I can do like a little video. Hopefully it's on the screen. So hopefully it doesn't mess everybody up. But yeah, you can click and drag either way. And, and, and that's a, that's a fast and easy way to zoom is you click to the right click to the left but it only works if you have the zoom tool engaged if you're going to try to click right to the left with any other tool it's not going to work that's the cool magic of the zoom tool and i'm going to go ahead and hit command zero to bring us back and that is the zoom tool guys a very useful thing for us to um play with right for us to kind of looking at, at at our artwork, especially if you want to zoom in to get to these really fine details. All right. So I know a lot of you like to um, create artwork on your phone and on in your iPads, and you have to use Zoom a lot to kind of get all the little details. Now you know how to do it in a quick fashion. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here, and I'm going to hit V as a shortcut. So it'll take me back to my selection tool. All right, so let's talk about some other views. So if what if we want to see something and there's it's, there's a lot of color and we can't see all of our details? Well, there's a way for us to view artwork in a different way. Now we're going to switch over to just taking a look at the different views. Okay, and one of the views is, is what we call outline. So view, and right up on top, view, outline. And what that does is it takes away all the color, right, and just gives us outlines. So you can see all of the different specific details of your design without any color interruption. So you can actually just look at the lines and see, oh, okay, there are some things that I've created here, created here. And then when you're done with this view, uh, we go to preview and we're back where we started, right? Um, and again, we're always in this preview mode. This preview mode is basically um, a mode that we can see the what's gonna be printed out or what's gonna be on the screen, kind of like our final mix, so to speak. So let's go ahead and go to another another view. So let's just talk about how this will look on a, a screen with pixels. Remember, we're working vector art. So we can go to pixel preview right here. All right, and this is good if you're going to be looking at what it looks like on a screen. So go to pixel, right? And right there, you're thinking to myself, well, it doesn't look any different, right? But let's take let's grab our zoom tool and zoom in. Oops, there you go. Now you can see how, how it looks, all right? Command zero, and this, let me hold it down. Now you're starting to see the pixelation on the edges. So yeah, if you zoom in on it and it's, and we put it on the, on, you know, we export this and we, and we put it on the web somewhere, it's gonna have this pixelation, this raster, it's not as sharp as vector images. And that's the difference. Remember I said in the beginning of the last video, the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator. Illustrator keeps everything really sharp. Photoshop works with pixels that are designed to look uh, so that you can look at it on a, on, a, on a screen, right? Command zero. Let's go ahead and view back. We'll go back to this uncheck that pixel preview. We'll just uncheck it and it brings us back to preview the preview view, right? So now if we zoom in, it's super sharp, just the way we like it. All right, command zero, gets back where we need to to do that, before, where we need to be at, I'm sorry. All right, so let's talk about looking at different projects, right? Different pa art panels. So right now we're working with one item at a time, but let's just say we're working on two items at a time, like two different 
um, iterations or two different versions of the same thing. All right, so let's let's work on it and you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go ahead and go to file. Everybody do this, right? Everybody, let's go to file and let's go to open and it should take us back or it should take you back into your dialog box where, or actually, actually your, your finder box. So you can actually, you can, or you have to go back to animation, right? If you need to go back to animation and get where you need to get, uh, get into our lesson one folder. And you're gonna go to L1 start two, right? And L1 start two is going to be two different t-shirts with that cool logo that we just designed in Illustrator. And by the way, Illustrator is where you make the best t-shirt art. So here's a, here's a big deal. We have a t-shirt press. Now, I'm not going to promise you anything, but if some of you are really good at this and come up with something elaborate, we may want to put it on a shirt, a real shirt that you can wear, right? Not not, not a picture shirt like what we're seeing here because um, we do have the capabilities for transfers, okay? But we'll talk about that later as you get more skill, all right? So here are two um, pictures, but I can't see both of them, so what am I going to do? I'm going to hit Command-0, but oh, guess what? It only zoomed in on one of the art boards right and i want to zoom in on both artboards so let me go ahead and press v real quick i could come over here also right let me do that hit select the selection tool right we're going to hit the selection tool we're going to go up here and go to view and then we're going to go down here and fit all in window that's what this one is all about right so now we have both artboards in here so we do this when working on two designs and we kind of want to a and b it see which one looks better see how our design looks on a white t-shirt see how our design looks like on a blue t-shirt and so that's kind of how you want you know you get everything to be um i guess look for everything to look symmetrical so you can actually kind of compare um, certain things, or maybe you're doing two different versions. Maybe you're, if you're working on a, a cover art for, let's say an Instagram picture, and then you want a full size picture here with a different dimension. It's the same picture, but maybe it has more information. Uh, I don't know. You're doing a Netflix, you know, a rectangle, um, cover art, right? So maybe that you, you, but it's the same design. So there's many reasons why you would need two artboards. This is just one example. So I just showed you kind of how, how to see them both at one time. So um, I want you, let's go ahead and click the model on the right, right? And again, that's the white t-shirt. All right, now this is what we call the active board, right? And you're gonna know that we have two boards here and you're gonna look all the way down here and you're gonna see where it says the number two, right? And that's what's selected. If you click this little button previous, you're gonna to go to number one right here. And then you go over here to this menu. One's called white shirt, blue shirt. Let's go to the white shirt and it'll start switching. So you can actually focus if you're gonna work back and forth, you can do that, right? Also in the properties panel, you can also change it to two and one. So that's how you can navigate through multiple panels, okay, and artboards. And, and that way, basically, you can you can you can work and let me go ahead and come up here, view, fit all in window, and that's how you basically navigate both of these. All right. So we have two documents open. All right. So these documents are basically uh, L1 and L you know two. So basically, it's the design and T-shirt design, and you can click and go back and forth between them by clicking up here. So we didn't close the other one. It's still in the background. And, and if you have multiple, they'll be around all the, all the way. They're just tabs, right? And you, you've you used tabs because we use them in when we're surfing the internet, right? So these also have tabs. And just like on the internet, we can move the tabs around, okay? And that's and that's pretty powerful because when we start getting to different things, we can, we can, uh, we need to, we may need to move things over. So example, you have two different projects and you want to move something from one project to another so say we didn't have this design and we want but we created the design over here oops sorry so we want to move this design and there was just a white and blue shirt there's a way you need to actually see both of them to, so you can drag and drop and the way that you do that is really easy right so we go to window arrange right here and we go to tile and basically now we have both, right? We'll go view, 
fit all in window right here and here we'll go view fit all in window now you can see both projects but ne right next to each other so you you can work actually work in, on two different projects at the same time in illustrator how cool is that right and that's really important because we really do want to to uh to see and work on multiple projects when you get to the advanced stages, right? Especially when you're working in animation, maybe you wanna work with the background on the right side and you wanna work with your characters on the left side. That really helps a lot, all right? Especially if you can drag your character on there, see what it looks like uh, with the background that you've made and then it's like, oh, it, it's missing, you know, size or color or you, you wanna work on it a little bit different, you know, you wanna make it into a symbol. Again, you put, bring it back or you delete it from here and then you just work back and forth. It's a really cool workflow, right? So please take the time to kind of figure this out, play with it, rewatch this video if you need to. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and um, we can, there's, and again, there's a lot of things that we can do in here and we can go and we can um, make them vertical. Um, we can make them um, different, right? Especially if you, if you come up over here to the right hand, right uh, upper left hand corner where it says arrange documents, right next to the little house where it says home. When you click that, we can actually change the orientation of these projects by going to, you know, vertical, right? And again, if you want to center it, you just go to view, and then we go fit all in window, right? And go over here, and we can actually since there's only one, we can code command zero and it's window. So now we have. Vertical, so you may want to work in this way or come up back over here and we go back to the actual vertical. I'm sorry, that was horizontal. This is vertical, right? And again, view all in window over here. We can just hit command zero because we know that just means we only have one file. So it's that simple. We're, we're done with, with um, how this works, okay? And last thing to notice, if you click up over here, if you click to arrange documents, you're going to see that there are some that are grayed out. That means you don't have enough panels because look how many panels you can, projects you can open up, right? Some are like six up, six projects at one time, you know, three up, three projects at one time over here too. But we only have two projects. So either up or it's horizontal or vertical. Okay. So that is it. That is our last part of our review. Just make sure you understand both videos. You paid attention. If you didn't, they're both in Canvas. Go back and review it tonight. But you will be you will basically be taking a test over both of these areas. Go ahead and you can close these up uh, and you don't have to worry about saving them because again, we're not adding to these. This is the end of this first lesson. We'll be continuing on after our, um, we get back from after taking our test. All right, guys, that's it. You guys have a great day. And again, this is Mr. Juarez saying over and out.